Greetings and salutations all you folks out there. I've got another game on Wonder for you today. We haven't done a Wonder in a little while, but not only is this a good breaking point, but this is a really weird Wonder game. It's a two versus two on the five versus five edition of Wonder, the open version, which I do love because it doesn't have the narrower center section. It has all of this open terrain to the outside edges that you can fight over. So overall, it's just a much more spammy, engaging map. There's no turtling. So this is, like I said, a two versus two. We've got the saddest panda taking Seraphim on the southern side, along with Yorick taking Cybran. This is a 15 and a 1700 on the south versus two 15s on the north. So relatively well balanced. And we've got Hard Noob taking UEF and then another Seraphim for Loopy Looper. Um, you can see the vast quantity of land factories being laid down by Hard Noob. I think that gives a good indication of what kind of build he's going for. We're going to see an enormous amount of spam this game. I would not be surprised if we see a couple of thousand units on the map by the 20 minute mark. That is up to these guys to churn out though, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, one thing that I will say is this map has an absurd amount of reclaim. For those of you who have not played it before, which I think will be very few and far between, we've got a couple of T3 wrecks along with an Omni at the front, then you've got an Omni and a T3 over here, as well as on the other side mirrored, and then the entire map is just completely covered in random T2 wrecks, we got rocks. I do like as well that this map is not flat. It has a quite a bit of unique terrain features, so you've got to be mindful of where your units are engaging from so that you don't run into things. The trees have sway. I never noticed that before. That is one of the uh, graphical enhancements that FAF has introduced into this. Um, there's whole new skins and shadow patterns and all kind of cool stuff for most of the units and features in here. So if you've only played Supreme Commander, uh, like the vanilla version from the CD or the Steam version, if you come to FAF, not only do we have awesome balance mechanics and a lot of improvements to the UI, the client, everything in general, but we actually have better graphics than the original version. <laughs> There's been a lot of things that have been improved. So here comes our first engagement. We've got two Thams versus a Mantis. I think we can all figure out which way that is going to end up. And we've got a Tham and a Scout headed out over to the right, hopefully going to snipe off an Expansioneer, but that may cross right there, may get one. There's an ACU over there, but I don't think it's going to be close enough to actually land a shot. Then we've got a Scout and a Bomber from Yorick. He's going to head across, hopefully he can snag some Engineers as he loops around over Looper. Um, this, in a 2 versus 2, your biggest challenge is Expansion. And if you can expand quicker than the other players, you pretty much automatically win because you'll have more mass extractors under your control, better map control, and overall just be able to produce more units. So Yorick and Panda are playing this exactly right, pushing out bombers to help snipe off these engineers that are laying around the outside edges, kill off anything that looks like it's spreading out. Hard Noob is setting up some serious spam in his base, as I mentioned before, but you can see with the reclaim values that he's pulling in, he's already reclaimed 1,200 mass, and we're only at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. So he actually needs to get on a mass extractor upgrade or 3, or he's going to overflow mass. But he's already on full production with about 7 factories, so well done to him. Looks like Loopy is a bit behind on his land factory production, but he's doing pretty well for himself as well. All right, Yorick is expanding his factories. He's got two online so far, building his third, and then Panda is bringing his fourth online. Looks like Panda is building a couple of air factories over here next to his Hydro. So good luck with that. We will see some T1 air spam, it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the speed just a little bit here because this could take a little bit to get rolling. Although, there are some nice aggressive moves going on. We've got a raid over here to the right, which I think is going to fail miserably seeing as Yorick has his commander over here. Ah, Yorick has land factories on the outside edges as well. So that's going to be immediately killed and reclaimed over there. And then Panda has pushed his ACU far out to the left. So these guys are immediately securing their outside expansions. And you can see how much more landmass total these two are holding 
than these two. And you can kind of see how this game is looking pretty good for the Southern team at the moment, although we're only at five minutes, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to take any bets on who's going to win right now. Hard Noob is bringing online more production than I think I've ever seen anybody put down on Wonder at the beginning of the game, but he has not mass stalled yet. He's already at 4,600 reclaim, and he's right in the perfect zone of power, um, bouncing around inside that bar. So he's doing extremely well for himself. The only reason he is stalling at this exact moment is because of the amount that he's reclaiming. And you can see how many tanks he's putting out onto the field. Just a huge amount of units. It looks like Yorick is bringing a line some more on the front here so he's going to have some more factories for himself chasing away this group of thams trying to get around the outside edges uh loopy is trying his best to get a raid in but it's just not going to work you can't raid with a unit slower than your opponent's main tank mantis are very speedy and therefore good at intercepts so not a whole lot going to happen as far as skirting yorick over here Panda Secure still in his location. We got the second Hydro coming online for Hard Noob. Looks like Hard Noob is in the middle of an ACU upgrade. That all could also explain why he was having a bit of a power issue just a few minutes ago. And he's finally bottomed out on the mass. But he does have some more engineers out over here. Hopefully they will be able to reclaim everything and keep his production rolling. Loopy pulling in 23k for reclaim. Panda at 1,800 and Yorick at 4,000. So Yorick and Hard Noob. Hard Noob far and away has the most reclaim. And Yorick is not doing too shabbily either. And you can see how many units these two guys as have as opposed to the other two. That is the power of reclaim, my friends. Yorick's going to go ahead and snag this boulder over here and some more random rocks along the way. Now we may see a run by from Yorick. Yorick does have an overwhelming amount of Mantis up here on the northern side. I think he could potentially swing through the back here, but with this second group of tanks moving to the north, that's going to get a little bit sketchy, so it looks like he's going to stay put for now, bring a second group up, and hopefully get something rolling over there. Ooh, Panda has gotten isolated. There are a whole lot of units coming down. And his tanks were far out to the right. Panda's going to keep pounding away at these tanks. He got 10 kills under his belt. And that is halfway to a veterancy, but he does have an Ilshiva. So the Ilshiva is going to save him, push back those tanks. That is the first chicken of the game here at minute 9. And yes, more chickens rolling out very quickly. So those are going to turn the tide. That's going to force a T2 progression for the northern team because if they don't, the Ilshivas are just going to run over them. And those Mantis did make it around the back. They are going to get swarmed, but they're going to take out a few mass extractors before they go down. And overall, the distraction up here was well worth losing this group of units. We've got Panda pushing some Thams over to the left as well. He's going to take out a couple of mass extractors here gonna get swept out pretty quickly but again anytime you can push across and take the pressure off of your main base it is a very very good thing we've now got several Ilshivas on the field oh tack launcher hard noob has thrown down attack and that is going to start what was that fire oh tmd haha -ha. Saddest Panda was very quick about getting that tmd up and he was wise to do so that's gonna be able to kill off any tacks that are launched, and now they're free to kill that tack launcher. It's going to shoot and interception, I think. Yes. No big dealio. Got some Ilshivas coming out for the northern side as well now. We've got two over here, and the commander moving up. That is a T2 commander. Again, point defense are not going to do you a whole lot of good on a map this spread out. This map is ginormous and very open. So we've got a huge amount of tanks. You cannot cut your production. Panda cut it very close. Getting that T2 online a couple minutes earlier than his opponents, he had a sketchy amount of units on his front. And very nearly left his ACU isolated, but thankfully he was able to pull it back and pull in those Zilshevas to save himself. 
Now we've got some pillars online from Hard New, but honestly, the pillars are completely outclassed by the Ilsheva. They're faster than the Ilshevas, but they just don't have the range or the accumulated health in one area that the Ilshevas do. Once you get a pack of Ilshevas, it, it's really hard for any other faction's T2s to compete with them. You pretty much either have to shift to T3 once you get 15 or 20 Ilshevas on the field against you, or you have to take air control and bomb it to death. Or turtle with a fire base. But even that, you can see how that is kind of failing at the moment. T1 point feds here are going to be able to stop them. But overall, the Ilshevas are pretty much a winning proposition. You got T2 point defense over here. That is not a super well placed pair of point defense. They can be skirted on this side and not be able to fire. I thought that crater was a little more pronounced, but it is actually just marks on the ground. So flat area, but there are um, vipers online. They're going to be able to nail those and remove them. They're no longer a problem. And good lord, the mantis. Holy cow. How many units are on the field right now? I wonder. Let's take a count on the mantis here. We've got 120 mantis. Panda's got... Panda's got 24 Ilshevas and 58 Thams. We're already looking at a huge quantity of units. This is the amount of units that it takes for air control. Not air control, map control. But speaking of air control, you can see we've already got about a combined 75 or so interceptors on the southern side. Opposed by only about 20 on the north. So I don't know why these guys are not pressing their air advantage. We do have a T2 gunship over here. That is a nice move. That is going to start hammering away at these tanks. Here come the interceptors to kill it, but I think that York is going to take air control without any problem at all, especially considering that he has a banger there. The T2 mobile flak is glorious. And a run by. This is a combined force of Ilshevas and strikers from the northern side. They are going to be able to skirt around and do some damage. This over here was a failed push. These guys are going to hurt the eco a little bit. We've got one mass extractor down. Unfortunately, there's no mobile flak, so these four gunships can pretty much go to town however they please, and the Ilshevas cannot do anything to defend themselves. We've got this T2 mass extractor is probably going to go down, and a bit of power that's going to be lost as well. Panda has so many units over here. He does have a few T2 mobile missile launchers. If he could get a few more online, and if he was able to take out these point defense, he could successfully push. Really, if he sent all of his Ilshivas around to the left. <laughs> Hero Mass Extractor surviving with 39 health. This one is going to go down, and the Ilshivas continue to move north. I can't believe that. One shot from one of those Ilshivas would kill that. So sad it did not. Um, as few units as Hard Noob has, really, Panda should be pushing to the left. Because this is the entire sum total of Noob's forces. And that is nothing compared to the Ilshavas that Satis Panda commands. So Panda could feasibly run over the entire left half of the map before these guys could react. Because they just don't have enough mobile attack units at all. Loopy is starting to push a pretty significant Ilshiva spam. Um, he does have quite a few online, more than enough to chase away this group of units. These Vipers are continuing to move forward and hit these T2 point defense. Uh, looks like Loopy may have the nano regen. Yes, he does. The first one. That is going to give him a pretty good HP boost as well as a nice regen bonus turning him into a pretty significant combat force. And our T2 power going up here, dangerously close to the front lines. I would have built it further back, because this is an expansion that may at some point fall. You don't want to have your power in an exposed position. And Panda pulling in 115 mass per tick with 17k reclaim under his belt. Loopy just a little bit behind, 111 mass income, but he, and he's pulled in 13k. Then we got Hard Noob with almost 30,000 reclaim, although his eco is smaller, 
and then Yorick sitting on 15k, pulling in 60 mass per tick. So Hard Noob is doing a huge amount of work over here. He's already gotten his T3 land factory online. We're here at 18 minutes, and he's already got T3. Don't see T3 land for any of the other guys. Is it planned? I don't see one. So hopefully we'll see some Percivals out at some point. That will help to control the Ilshiva problem. Percivals are one of the few things that can help with that. Loopy getting skirted by some gunships. The gunships decide to retreat in the face of a couple mobile flak coming down. Don't get too brave there, buddy. You don't have air control, and that can turn into a really bad time. Ilsev is getting pestered by all of this T2 point defense. It's not something you want to have happen. Don't want your units to take shots unnecessarily. We got mobile missile launchers exchanging fire with other mobile missile launchers. All in all, I don't think this is a winning proposition trying to break this um, firebase for Satis Panda. Let me look at the interceptor count here. We've got, oh, gunships in the north. Just about missed that up. We've got no mobile flak in the area, which is a huge mistake. All of the mobile flak is down here. It's going to start moving north, but unfortunately it is far too late. Interceptor is getting hammered over here. Don't want to turn your back to the enemy air. And flying over flak. Not good, not good at all. Flak going to engage, just wiping out whole clumps of interceptors. Interceptors and gunships going to retreat, but the damage is done. Thankfully, that flak is going to protect the remaining Ilshivas, though. Got some harassment going on in the north. Excellent use of those gunships by Yorick. Let's take a look here at the interceptor counts. We've got uh, 67 for Yorick and 92 for the Satis Panda. So a tremendous amount of air being built. We've only got 16 over there, and Hard Noob has exactly zero. Nope, he doesn't. There's a few right there. About 10 or so. Loopy is going to pull up and try to grab some of these T2 gunships, but uh, his mass extractors are down at this point, so it's a moot point. So many interceptors. My goodness. We're at 20 minutes. Not really seeing a major shift towards T3 air any time in the near future. We've got a T2 factory coming online and a whole lot of T2 power, but you got to consider the mass income and the reclaim that these guys are pulling in. You need so much overkill on power when you are dealing with this amount of reclaim. So we do have Percival's moving to the front. Not enough yet to take on this group of Ilshivas, but it is getting closer. Anytime you can mass Percival's, it is a good thing to do still not seeing any shift towards T3 from these guys. Ah, there is a T3 factory. So we will see bricks on the field in just a moment. So a bit of a land push over here by Hard Noob. I don't think that he has enough. This group of units is going to be a substantial enough group that is going to be able to hold these without much progression. And then these Elshavas are going to run up into the base. However, there are a there is a steady stream of Ilshivas coming in from all of these factories back here, as well as T3. We do have some Othams moving in. So yes, those Ilshivas are going to pull back, deciding it's not worth it to try to extend any further. On the right, Loopy Looper getting brave with his ACU. He does have the T2 and Nano Regen with the gun upgrade. That is a dangerous commander, but I'm not sure at this point in the game he should be doing this. He's got a bit of a terrain problem here. He's got to watch where he's firing. So you can see he's impacting the hill right there with a lot of the fire that he's laying down. That group of Ilshivas will be very handy in guarding his ACU. He may be able to break this, um, the production here. If he can eliminate some of those factories, that would be huge. Especially the T3 factory. He's got to be mindful of the gunships. And then on the northern side, we do have a run-by. All of the units have been pulled to the south to assist with this push. Yorick looked at it. He said, well, 
I have enough to make a stand down here. Why not take the opportunity and I will wipe out all of this eco up here. He is pushing forward with his Rhinos and Mantis. I'm going to take out a couple of these T2 mass extractors and do some damage up there while he is able. We got a breakout. He's going to be able to deal with some of these Ilshivas as long as he can keep it out of the reach of Loopy. If Loopy overcharges it, that is pretty much the end of it. Um, Saddest Panda was able to hold Hard Noob creeping up slightly to build some point defense. Saddest Panda getting his hands on some of this reclaim is going to assist in fueling his war machine. He does have some T1 point defense going down around the outside edge. This is actually a really good idea. It's not going to stop anything, but it is going to slow it down and damage it. So anything you can do to hinder the progress of enemies that are skirting you. And this is still going on up here. Holy cow. Taking out another mass extractor. Loopy, I gotta say, you win the Medal of Courage because I would not be standing where you're standing. I can tell you that. That is very dangerous. Standing in between bricks and rhinos and a huge swarm of Ilshivas. He does have some units himself, but here come the gunships. He has no flak right next to him. Those are going to put a hurting on the ACU and do it quickly. He's got interceptors coming in and the flak. The flak is going to tear a new one in York's interceptor swarm and moving down towards the gunships. Loopy dropping below 75%, almost to half health, but those gunships are going to get forced back after taking heavy hits from the flak. You can see all these interceptors dropping. Most of these were already out of fuel, so I think it's not that huge of a deal. But still, you don't want to lose that many in one shot. Orange now has a huge amount of air production online. He's doing a great job of assisting Loopy with his air. And we got T1 Bomber Spam. Hopefully that will be put to good use. I'm not sure where he's going to hit. He may shoot. Ah, T3 Air Factory. Strap Bombers Ahoy! That may be the solution for dealing with this Rambo Com. Loopy Looper still looking strong over here. He is hammering out these rhinos. Here comes the strat right across. No! It is going to drop on the units, not on the ACU. I'm not going to question the wisdom of that. I think that really either way is good. You don't have much chance of killing the ACU. And if you kill some units, it's easier to defend yourself. So I think either way on that, whether it's the ASCU or the units is targeted, it is fine. We got these T1 bombers coming in now. It looks like they're just going for blanket fire on this group of Ilshivas. And some RD and engineers and other things along the way. Nice split attack there. Saddest Panda throwing down some T2 point defense to help fend off those uh, Percivals over there. We've got bricks on the right hand side, a group of three that are trying their best to kite around this ACU and these units. Seven kills, three kills, and two kills. Not too bad considering they're going up against T2 units, but York's base is just getting hammered. He's slowly losing production. He lost some T3 HQs here, and his eco is not looking too great either. He's down to 43 income and decreasing slowly but steadily. So not good at all. These strats on the north though are gonna do a pretty good job. This bomber taking out a T2 power. Looks like they're just trying to kill off some eco. We had a mass extractor there that was killed. So nice job from Panda doing what he can and dropping more T2 power. Does Loopy have RAS? I don't think that he does. He may have first RAS. He definitely doesn't have second RAS. So killing power is probably still a good idea. No, he doesn't have RAS because he is on nano regen. That was a stupid observation. There he is. Already fully regen, heading back to base. Figure he's done what he can. There's no point in leaving his ACU exposed any longer when he has all of these offums on the case to destroy this base. York down to 38 income now, not looking good at all. But look at Panda. Panda has 174 income 
shifting to 231 with the finish of that resource allocation of no was it yes I think it was I saw his power spike 199 per tick which is almost as much as the other two players combined so very nice eco whole lot of t3 support factories holy cow there's gonna be percivals percivals everywhere in just a few minutes all right looks like loopy is pushing in further we got a strap bomber coming in and I think it's going to miss the drop there, but it's okay. The second one's going to get it and do a pretty substantial amount of damage. Still with the Ilshavas. We're at 27 minutes, and most of the units on the map, at least for the Seraphim players, are Ilshavas still. Sadis Panda is sitting on 48 Ilshavas. Loopy on 50. This is basically the March of the Chickens at this point. Still a huge amount of T1 air. I love how the Southern player has gone T3 air and really is not doing much of any ASF production. Basically just spamming interceptors and making strap bombers, which there's nothing wrong with that. Why not? If your opponent doesn't have T3 air, if you can maintain air control with interceptors, then that is the way to go. And you can just build strap bombers and annoy the crap out of the other players with them. T3 Air Scout running across there, getting a bit of intel. We've got T3 power going down, so I'm sure that in short order, we're going to have a T3 Air Factory in the north as well. We've got some Percivals and Othams over here just kind of standing across from these Ilshavas. Not really doing a whole lot. Percivals are going to be able to fire at these but not doing anything to actually progress further. And that Strap Bomber, still killing things. Two kills so far. A couple of mass extractors and it's going to get shot down. These guys are probably going to start building Sam's just to help put a damper on Panda's strats. He's got two in the back here, but it looks like he has given up on trying to raid Eco anymore. Not really worth it after a certain point because you have to kill two or three or four T2 mass extractors to make it worth the strap bomber. Um, and once you're not killing, I would say three or more with the strat, it's not worth sending them anymore. It's a lot of mass to throw away. All of these Ilshavas. We got two groups moving up now accompanied by these three bricks. Is that the same three bricks? I think it is six seven and four and they are going to be able to fend off this is a slow progression it's not actively running into york's base but it is definitely eliminating it little bit by little bit all four of those strap bombers dropping going to do a pretty substantial amount of damage to that group interceptors ahoy you don't need ASF to kill strap bombers. Interceptors do just fine. Cool tip. Uh, interceptors actually have the same flight speed as strap bombers. So if you intercept correctly, interceptors can kill strap bombers no problem. The thing is, if you turn behind the strap bomber, the strap bomber is running in a straight line. If the strap bomber is out of reach by the time the interceptors start accelerating in a straight line, then you will never catch up to the strap bomber. So you have to intercept correctly. If you do that, then you can kill strap bombers no problem. That is the main advantage of the swift winds being T2 versus T1 air. Um, the swift winds are faster than strap bombers and T2 transports, which is the main failing of the interceptor. They're the same speed as strap bombers and T2 transports. So. That is one of the things that makes Aeon quite a bit stronger air-wise in the T2 phase. They have the high flight speed on the Swift Winds. Honestly, if you paid, if they have the same damage capabilities and you are paying more just to have the higher flight speed and the tighter turning radius, I think I would still pay for it just for the sake of intercepting things like that. And Strap Bomber flying around here. Gonna kill off one mass extractor, but not anything else, and immediately get shot down by a Sam. So many scouts. Strap bomber winging around the outside edge. Gonna try again. 
It's just going to get shot down again. I'm not sure why he keeps throwing these away. Unless he can land a hit on the T2 power, possibly. If he can hit this power generator, and then that power generator, and then maybe a mass extractor. But there are SAMs in a kind of scattered around in this mix now. So strats are going to have a hard time. There it goes, off mapping just a hair. Brilliant T1 bombers. The carpet damage from those is very nice. There's the T2 flying northward. Is he doing what I... S nope, he is looping. Not good, not good, not good. There's ASF and Sam's. So, Strat Bomber's dead. He would have kept flying in a straight line. He could have potentially hit two more targets. At least one more would have been taken out. But no. Finally, a bit of calm. We got T3 mobile anti-air being dropped in the mix here to help deal with some of these strat bombers that are flying around and pestering the masses. Still spamming Ilshivas. My goodness. I don't think I've ever seen this many Ilshivas built in a game. There's almost 75 on the field for Loopy. And Panda... Let's find him. He's actually got more. He's got 77. Might as well open up a poultry farm at this point because there, there is no call for that many chickens. It's just so many. Although it does look like uh, Panda, anyway, is moving a bit more towards T3. He's brought some T3 supports online. He's building more Othams. Though the Othams are so bad that I really don't blame them for building chickens as long as they possibly can. More Percivals moving towards the front. There's now enough Percivals in this group that they can feasibly take on even this size swarm of chickens. Throw a couple mobile shields over it and kite the group as long as you possibly can and that many Percivals will be able to deal with chickens. So... Uh, that is part of the reason for the shift to T3, I think, from Satis Panda as far as getting more and more T3. Although Sniper Bots would be an excellent choice because Hard Noob is basically sitting. You can bring some Sniper Bots up here and lay down some good suppression fire and probably snipe off three or four of these Percivals before Hard Noob realized what was happening. Alternately, T3 Mobile Artillery. T3 Mobile Artillery is always amazing. And these bricks, man, these bricks. 27 kills. That's a new one. Three kills. Apparently one of them bit the dust at some point. So there is a new member of the Three Musketeers. And this one has 19 kills. Bricks are impressive. I must say. That high fire rate combined with the long range just makes them awesome when you still have T2 spam to contend with. They're still extremely strong versus T3, second only to the Percival, but versus T2, it's just murder. I don't know what it is with Hard Noob and building his power generators close to the front. This one isn't even under shields. If I'm building something that large, that vital, and that explosive, I'm going to build it as far back as I possibly can. i got a group of Percivals over here for some reason. I don't know why they're clumping up in the back. You could really use them on the front since he's pushing. And the Percivals moving in. That is actually going to be hard for Panda to deal with. He does have all the Ilshivas over there, but so far deciding not to pull them in kind of needs to stick around because we got this group moving down oh that's a hard call to make but his Othams are running thin and he does have his ACU in a dangerous position here next to that many Percivals T1 bombers coming in for a bit of blanket damage looks like they are targeting the Percival which can dodge no problem there I don't think I've ever... Oh, there they go. <laughs> the chicken is a majestic creature. It tends to migrate in swarms from one location to the next, traversing the landscape with its even stride. 
They appear to be operating under the principles of a hive mind. All traveling to the exact same location at the direction of a higher being. And with the departure of the chickens, we have the advance of Loopy Looper. He is going to push in at this base. There's still a lot of bricks online that are going to be able to seriously throw a wrench in, into this advancement. That is such awesome firepower laying down. These guys haven't taken a hit yet. They're kiting away from all of the incoming damage. And this was withdrawn, seeing as all of the chickens were moving this way. And some chickens sticking around. Brick's going to continue to kite back. I think York is going to be robbed of his base. But it is going to come at great cost to Loopy Looper. And there's going to be so much reclaim. So much reclaim on this spot. All of these T3 and T2 wrecks. This is what Subcom is all about right here. You don't often see a match with this scale of land engagements on a regular basis. There has just been so much land spam in this game. It's ridiculous. Well done from all these guys striving for map control. We've seen so much poking and prodding and shifting of units. There's our first T4, 36 minutes, and finally getting a T4 on the field. Loopy Looper is pushing a Yathatha out, Yathatha, whatever you want to say. Some people call them YOLOs, and honestly, that's easier to say, but I hate the term YOLO. Oh my word, what is this? We have an Awasa plan. Somebody is going to get brained with a bomb, and I can't wait to see who it is. Because in a spammy map like this, when you have this many units online, an Awasa bomb is absolutely devastating. No two ways about it. You can obliterate whole chunks of land spam with that bomber. The cumulative damage is just so high. You got all of these bricks engaging once again with the Ilshivas, but there's so many bricks online now that really the Ilshivas don't stand a chance. Um, those bricks are easily going to wipe out the front lines gonna kite away these guys are gonna run for the hills and Yorick is going to continue to reclaim I gotta look up the reclaim values here we've got 49,000 reclaim in Satis Panda's bank Loopy Looper pulling 57k hard noob sitting on 76,000 reclaim and Yorick on almost a hundred thousand that is so ridiculous. He's building power in the back here to try to give himself something to build with and throwing down a monkey lord as quickly as he can. Honestly, with the reclaim that he's pulling in, megaliths are nothing, even though he's only pulling 40 mass per tick. And here's where the Athatha excels. A lot of people really don't like the chicken, and I don't know why. Um, I think it's kind of a common misconception that it's weaker than the Galactic Colossus, where in reality the damage radius of both the secondary shot and this, I don't know what that is called, I call it the Ball of Death. The AoE on that thing is huge, and the damage is so, so high. I think it's 10k plus on that shot, even though it fires very, very rarely. But that thing right there just wipes out huge swaths of units when it hits. You can see the area of effect taking place here. And they're just excellent at laying down blanket damage. Yes, the Galactic Colossus has the tra Tractor Claws. And it can chew through um, T3s pretty quickly. But I think a single Yathatha is better than a single Galactic Colossus versus T3 and T2 spam. The more Galactic Colossuses you have... I think the stronger that they get because of the accumulated HP and the fact that the Tractor Claws don't really interfere with each other's targeting, whereas the Athatha is overkill by a lot once you have two or three of them in the same spot. But as far as a single unit, I think I would rather have a chicken in this instance than a GC. And that Awas is about halfway done at this point. Satis Panda pulling 380 mass per tick Loopy is right up there with them. So these are the two eco powerhouses 
Hard Noob is only sitting on 179 mass income, but his reclaim is making up for it. And Yorick... I don't even want to talk about him. <laughs> His mass income is absolutely depressing. But he is reclaiming like a boss and building monkey lords. So he is still being very useful to this game. I, this is by no means over. I still think the southern team is sitting on the majority of the reclaim here. And they have more than enough eco to, I think, run over these players it's just a little bit of a problem with unit choice because sadness panda insists on spamming the ever-living hell out of Othams. and yes he does have some mobile shields and those are good but he has no long-range support units at all no t3 artillery no sniper bots and the percivals with the range on those things the percivals just totally outclass the Otham and it, it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. Um, especially once you get a wall of like 30 Percivals here. The Percivals are just gonna chew a hole through any amount of Othams. You'd have to have two or three times as many Othams as you have Percivals to even have a chance of breaking this. All right, this Monkey Lord is doing a pretty good job of kiting around Hitting these units from a distance, trying to get some kills under his belt towards a veterancy. Already got 23 kills. Chicken is going to move up and engage the bricks. And shifting fire to the monkey ward. Those bricks can sideswipe the chicken. We're going to start seeing the area of effect come into play here. Bricks splitting up slightly. Monkey lord moving in laser to the face I love the targeting bone on that look the laser is literally shooting through the eyeball hole of the Athatha that is great monkey lord is going to go down and unfortunately the bricks have been chewed up but there is the Awasa I missed the bomb drop back there it was a bomb on the Percivals you can see there's a lot of Percivals that are missing oh no don't don't do it oh that was brilliant that was the dreaded Awasa ASF bomb. If you stall an Awasa and let the ASF overtake you, the ASF fly under the Awasa as they fire to turn around. And the Awasa, if you ground fire a bomb when there's ASF under it, the bomb will collide with the ASF. You can see 110 kills on that Awasa. That is brutal. And now the Northern team has very, very little ASF. That is terrible. Here comes the Awasa for a drop on this group. This is going to hurt badly. There's the bomb. And kaboom. Bye-bye, Othams. Bye-bye, bye-bye, my Otham, bye. Somebody needs to write a parody. And the Percival's moving in once again. There's still enough Percival's over here that the accumulated mass... Can hold off all of these offums pretty much indefinitely. Here comes the bomber for another pass. Got ASF on its tail. It's got a whole lot of HP, but ASF are strong. The bomb is not going to collide that time. There goes the bomb hitting. Oh my goodness, that was hurt. That hurt to watch. That was probably 20 Percivals in one shot with that bomber. The Awasa actually has pretty strong anti air cannons. You can see it's killed off. I think that was about 15, 15 ASF or so, somewhere around in that number. The might of the T1 bombers trying to chew, actually doing a really good job of chewing through the health on that Yathafa. Yeah, the, the Awasa did defend itself by itself from about 15 ASF without dying. Severely weakened, but not dying. Interceptors coming in, putting down the hurt, got Sam's. Going to get the bomb off, an impact on the Athatha for some damage, and then all of those T3 support factories. So much build power gone with that thing. It's going to pull back down to under 1,000 health. It's going to get off another bomb. 200 health, and there's the drop, and the... Impact is just going to miss the Athatha, but the mass is on this side now. 
Uh, Yorick is going to have a chance to reclaim that. That was very nice. Very nice indeed. You want to drop that Awasa where you can reclaim it. You don't want to drop it in their base for an easy mass donation. Still so many Percivals though. Hard Noob though, that is going to be the end of his Percival spam, at least for now. Because he lost all of that build power. Yolshev is coming in to contest with the... You thought as you can see how much effect that uh, area of effect is having though. Just wiping out clumps of those things. And the Otham's coming in to clean up the mess. That is going to be the end of Yorick's base. It is down to 21 mass per tick. Nothing really left to throw out there. The Monkey Lord that he was building is down, but Saddest Panda still has enough Otham's. Ah, there we go. You can see this Yathotha cleaning up these Percivals without much trouble. Laying down the damage on those. Here comes the huge area of effect cannon. And it's going to miss. Slow. Ah, nope. There we go. Slow travel speed on that. That is the only disadvantage. This thing is ridiculously easy to dodge. All right, we've got one Yathotha down. Bricks kiting around. And the Othams are going to drop the other. That's going to leave all this mass on Yorick's doorstep. You can see he's already building a Monkey Lord. He's throwing down a Megalith. As long as he can keep his power online, he can pretty easily throw up any kind of T4 he wants. At this point, I think a Scathus actually would not be a bad idea. These guys are barely sustaining. It looks like the Northern team is finally starting to pull ahead noticeably. This is starting to tip in the Northern team's favor despite that hit that was such a colossal hit absolutely devastating and this again this is an area where Satis panda really needs to get on the ball here uh, yes there is a yathotha but there's barely any supporting percivals and he has this huge clump of Othams with a chicken of his own and if he were to go right now i think he actually has a pretty good chance of punching through this left side here but the longer he waits, the more time he gives these guys to get their production back online. And these guys have more mass. Loopy Looper is pulling 423. Hard New pulling 153. To Satis Panda's 526 mass income. So, you need to press the advantage while you have it. And here he's going to lose his Yathotha for pretty much no reason at all. It's just going to take fire from the Yathotha and Percival's there. And it's going to go down. No support from the Othams. That is so sad to see. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing all of these ways where the Southern team could actually pull off a win here. They have the ability to do it and I keep seeing just these little... Each one of these little instances in and of itself is not enough to doom the Southern team. But all of these little slips put together are doing a tremendous amount of harm. And here, we've got all these Othams and no defenses. There are no Percivals. There's very few point defense, just some T1s here that could be easily killed off. And the ASU is right freaking there. If all of these Othams were pushed through, I don't think that Loopy could respond in time with his chicken to save Orange. And that would be most of the production is with orange at this time yes purple has all the air production but he has a very small amount of land factories so if you knock out orange you knock out all of these support factories a fair bit of power and a pretty good amount of eco so that would be a good kill well in a two versus two an acu kill is always a good thing and it is no share traditionally all right reclaim going on there throwing up this monkey lord and I thought he built a megalith. Nope, apparently not. He replaced the order right there. But there is another Awasa coming up. I think there is enough reclaim here, though, that he could have built the Scathus. And the Scathus on Wonder is one of the most devastating tools that you can possibly create. And there is just not enough up here. Um, there's no Strat Bombers in production. There's no nukes. There's nothing up here that could stop a Scathus. And even though this amount of land is probably enough to land a devastating blow down here, if you have the Scathus online without these guys scouting it, which you can throw up a Scathus really, really quickly uh, with the amount of mass that they have down here. 
um, you can actually hammer this to death while it's traveling towards your Scathus. Not really difficult to do. Although it looks like they're about to start pushing, so that's going to be a bit more difficult. This would be a brilliant bomb right here. Wipe out the entirety of the air production for Loopy. Ah, there's strap bombers. I was wrong. There are some strap bombers. Not enough to break any shields, really, but there are a few up there. The Awasa is finished. I'll have to see where it heads off to. Another bomb planted in the midst of all these Othams would be a good thing. You gotta think, there's a certain amount of damage that the Awasa does. 11k for the bomb, but it does 11k to every single uh, target that it hits. So the potential damage of that weapon is actually sky high. It looks like we have a chicken factory going on up here. We've got Yathothos coming out left, right, and center. Um, if the Awasa does... If the Awasa impacts, you know, a dozen units, it's actually pulling off, uh, what, 132k damage? Because it's 11,000 damage times 12 units. So... Yeah, you can get the potential damage of the Athotha, or not the Athotha, the Awasa, up really high. I hate Seraphim unit names. They are so hard to pronounce. Oh, the ASF are accumulating on the north, but still, I think there's a slight advantage for the southern team considering the sheer amount of interceptors that are here. Got another Yathotha up for the Saddest Panda. This Yathotha was given over to Hard Noob, who is also building a Fat Boy. Once this Fat Boy comes online, I think it's relatively over for the Southern team. Just because there's not really anything going on aggressive down here. And the Awasa is still sitting. Need to land a bomb there, bud. You gotta kill something. This would also be an excellent bomb location. You get four T3 support factories, a couple of mechs, a T3 power in one shot. Along with all of these T3 engineers. You could actually deal enough damage to kill the fat boy as well. So much good stuff to hit. Or one bomb right there. You gotta kill like 30 Othams in one shot. 86 Othams. And 110 on the southern side. I legitimately, I have never seen spam on this scale. When you're talking 100 versus 100 chickens. And then later on in the game, 75 versus 100 Othams with T4 accompaniment. This is just enormous scale. This is the epitome of Supreme Commander right here. This is like a full-scale war. This isn't even a battle anymore. This is a huge battlefield and the poking and prodding and multiple fronts and everything going on is just awesome. I love games like this. And the chickens are in a standoff. They're playing chicken. <laughs> so many more Othams on this side though. I don't know why this just hasn't been plowed under yet. Saddest Panda, if he dropped with his Awasa right there and then immediately just ran in with everything that he had, there is quite literally nothing that he could do. He could kill Orange no problem right now. But here comes this group. You need to get that Awasa in the air ASAP and land a bomb in the middle of this group, if nothing else. And Panda is just kind of wandering around in circles here taking fire from the chicken and there goes the Awasa it's gonna land a bomb which is gonna impact on the shields no damage done and boom Awasa shot down that was a terrible loss oh my word that is so frustrating to see northern team is going to take air control at this point yes loopy just has so many more ASF and then here's a Megalith, gonna hammer that chicken into the ground. It looks like Yorick actually started the Mazer upgrade. Probably looking at a Telemazer. Not a bad idea at this point. Either one of these would be a good guy to kill. 
And again, Panda extending the Athatha without also extending his Othams at the same time. He's got to remember that these Percivals just so drastically outrange his Othams. You got to get the Othams out in front of the chicken to protect that unit. You got Mobile Shields moving in trying to protect it, but no. High AoE weapons gonna impact directly on the chest of this unit above the shields. And it's going to kill it. The Lightning Blast is now going to harm as well. Losing some frame rate in a bad kind of way with all this fire going on here. And this Ethoth is just going to land blow after blow with that high AoE cannon. You can see right there, four Othams and some support units in one shot. He's going to pull a Veterancy. Don't run now, Panda. Get in there and kill him. Overrun it. Nope. I'm gonna retreat, get out of range. The Othams just do not have much range on them. And he's gonna take a bunch of fire in the back from that chicken, which is going to vet. Again, I think. Right here. Yep. Another group of Othams right there. That chicken is just devastating versus these densely packed groups of units. We've got another war going on on the northern side. We've got a megalith versus a huge group of Othams, and you can see Yo Loopy has absolutely no second thoughts about just swarming this location. He's got 86 Othams. What have you got to be afraid of? Pushing in his strat bombers, killing off that megalith. It looks like he has got ASF over the base down here. He has spotted the ACU. Here come the bombers. Kaboom! Impact! Oh, five... Nope, there it is. <laughs> I was about to say he was going to survive on 500 health, but there was more bombers coming in. Yorick is down. Not a tremendous loss at this point because all of his T4s were already dead and he really has no base to speak of, but still. All right, Panda is by himself with only the Seraphim tech. We got a fat boy over here to the left. I think we can honestly say that that is game over for the saddest panda. He does not have enough left. He's gonna stall this group versus another T4. He's gonna lose. He's got a chicken shooting his units in the back. Fat boy progressing from this side. Just does not look good at all for him. I I am so sad to see this happen because there's there's probably five or six different ways that the southern team could have won this. But, you know, managing this big of a map on this kind of scale with this many units for one person is a hard thing to do. I can understand slipping up. I slip up as well when I have this much to manage. It's just a lot to think about. And sometimes you don't see things like I'm looking at the map from a bird's eye view. I can see the big picture of what's going on. And sometimes that's not possible to really see when you're sitting there in your fog of war. But this is one of the reasons that you scout, 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 and you've got to know your unit's capabilities to a T and know when to push, when to build different types of units. And I think way number one would have been if Panda, he had so many more units on many occasions, if he had just doubled down and just pounded right through Orange. There was two or three different times I saw that he could have just obliterated Orange. And then also not building sniper bots, not building T3 mobile artillery. Um, that could have easily won it at a couple of points. And then also building, um, not rushing Escathus when they had, I think, four T4 wrecks in easy access in addition to a pile of T3. They could have rushed Escathus in under two minutes with the amount of power and mass that they had. And that would have easily won the game for them. So, I don't mean to sound like I'm being incredibly hard on these guys. This was a well-fought game from both sides, and I love the epic scale of battles like this. But looking at it from a bird's eye view, and I know they want to know this too, any way that you can, anything that you can see as more options to win a game, you want to open up your mind and see everything. Um, Hopefully they can look at this and maybe pull off a win on the next one because the southern team had better eco They had better production. They just made a few 
small wrong choices that all put together turned into a loss for their team. And there he goes under fire from the Othams. That is going to be the end of it. Well done, Loopy Looper and Hard Noob with your insanely high reclaim numbers. 200k plus a piece versus 100k for a Saddest Panda and then Yorick was sitting on about 200 as well. Um, well done on all fronts to you guys. That was just a huge match. Alrighty, that's going to wrap up this game and this cast. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I love watching large scale games like this. Just sit back, relax, and have an extended experience. And I hope that you will join me for the next one as well. Remember that this weekend I'm going to be doing another live cast. Those are 6 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Last time around we had about 50 people watching the live event. And it was just a good Q&A session, answer some good questions about strategy, about different types of units. You guys are asking my opinions on all kinds of things, and I love talking to you guys. So come on and engage, get in on those chats, maybe you'll learn something, I know you'll have a good time. Remember, it is 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, I think that is GMT minus 5, if I'm not totally mistaken. Alrighty, I hope to see you there and definitely to see you in the next cast. I am out of here, guys. Thanks for watching.